Travel consideration provided by... Marshall's buyers are detail-obsessed perfectionists who take quality very seriously and go to the ends of the earth to hustle the best of the best for you. Yes. We get the deals. You get the good stuff. Marshall's. This is Sam. How may I help you? This is a butt dial. Well, somebody's butt. Just thought I'd let you know that with Consumer Cellular, you can get the same exact coverage as the leading carriers, but for up to half the price. Da -da 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 -da. Tomorrow's E.T. Vault Unlocked, Kevin Costner. From westerns to sports films, E.T. on the set of Kevin's iconic movies. It is a good job. All right, we leave you now with Kate Hudson's sweet love letter to her 20-year-old son, Ryder, in the form of her new music video, Live Forever. Take care, y'all. It was you and me forever. From the moment Kate's Can eldest son entered the world to when he finally... First at five, it will be up to the medical examiner to determine exactly what caused the death of a man who was found in a burning home. San Antonio firefighters say they tried their best, but were not able to get to him in time. Gina Weber tells us why there may be a good reason why the man could not get out on his own. Smoke signals deadly trouble in the 4,000 block of Commercial Avenue. A home there is where there also was fire which caused destruction and apparently death. It appears the fire uh, originated in the, kind of in the middle of the structure towards the front. Uh, the victim was located near that same area. Um, don't know if, uh, if, the, uh, if the victim was always in a wheelchair, or just needed it for to ease of access. San Antonio firefighters found a man in his 60s dead inside the home. Neighbors had noticed the fire and called them around 9.30 this morning. Fire crews say before they were able to go inside, they had to beat back the flames shooting out of the metal building. Looks like it, it maybe one time was a, a business, but it's now it, it's been converted to a, a living quarters. According to neighbors, the man who lived there used a wheelchair to get around. It's unclear if that's what stopped him from escaping or if there was something else that caused his death. Firefighters knew almost from the moment they got here that they had more than property at stake, but they say as hard as they tried, they couldn't get to the man in time. Now there are heavy hearts as a result of the man's death. Through tears, friends told us they were too upset to talk about him. Investigators, including police homicide detectives, focused on what was left, looking through the ruins to rule out any foul play and to find out how the fire started. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at five, a disturbing revelation about the concrete truck driver involved in that deadly school bus crash that was filled with pre-K students in Bastrop. Media outlets in Austin are now reporting that according to court documents, the driver of the concrete truck that caused the crash, Jerry Hernandez, admitted to doing cocaine the morning of the crash. He also admits he smoked marijuana the night before. This information coming in on the same day that video of the crash is released. This is video of the bus crash in Bastrop where two people died, including a five-year-old student, a school bus and a concrete truck, both traveling on Highway 21 in Bastrop County last Friday. The video showing the moments before the crash on an exterior camera of the bus. You can see here a concrete truck on the left side of the video. When it comes into view, it it clips the school bus and almost immediately the bus flips and rolls. We stop the video right here because we want to be mindful and respectful to the fact that two lives were lost. Within moments of this crash, Good Samaritans are seen coming to help. They get on board the bus. 44 pre-K students from Tom Green Elementary and Hayes Consolidated ISD as well as 11 adults were here. The students returning from a field trip to the Bastrop Zoo and little Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya, one of two people killed. What the video doesn't show, however, is that there was a car that reportedly struck the back of the bus. The driver of that car, 33-year-old Ryan Wallace, the other victim who died. News reports in Austin say 53 people in all were injured. A school district spokesperson says the school bus did not have seat belts. DPS is still investigating.
We have a new safety warning tonight about those colorful, squishy water bead toys that are popular with kids. Regulators say two brands sold on Amazon contain a dangerous toxin. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz reports, it's what a San Antonio mom has been warning about for years. Water beads look like innocent fun. They start out tiny but grow dramatically in water. If a child swallows them, the beads can expand, risking choking, intestinal blockages, lung collapse, even death. I have been talking about this for a really long time. Ashley Hogan's daughter Kipley swallowed her sister's water beads as a baby and got very sick. Now, new warnings from the Consumer Product Safety Commission after their tests found excessive acrylamide, a known carcinogen, in two brands of water beads sold on Amazon, Django Star and Tula Duo. Acrylamide is a toxin that can harm the nervous and reproductive systems and the brain. After Kipley ingested another brand of water beads, she was diagnosed with toxic brain encephalopathy caused, her mother says, by acrylamide poisoning. For her, it's meant that she's needed some extra help when it comes to school and she needed a lot of therapy when she was younger. Amazon says it has stopped allowing the sale of water beads marketed to children, including as toys. But that may not solve the problem entirely. Take a look. We were able to find several for sale online marketed as something other than toys. Consumer Report says this is part of a bigger problem, an influx of unregulated products, mostly from overseas. Just because something is available on an online platform does not mean it's tested to be safe. And and just because a label says non-toxic, she says be skeptical because the term is under-regulated and under-enforced. A warning Ashley and Kipley want every family to hear. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. A driver arrested after San Antonio police say that he crashed into two vehicles parked along I-35 on the northeast side, and that sent one man to the hospital. It happened around 1030 last night near Loop 410 and Ritterman Road. Police tell us that a man was parked on the shoulder because his SUV had broken down. His brother parked his SUV behind him to offer help. And that's when a third driver in a truck hit the parked vehicles. One of those SUVs then hitting the men in the road. He was taken to the hospital with serious injuries, police arresting the man in the truck, and they charged him with intoxication assault. Happening today in about six hours, the city will lift its curfew on city parks, allowing residents to set up for Easter weekend camping. At 11 o'clock tonight, families can go into 11 different parks across the city. We headed out earlier today to Brackenridge Park, and you see some folks have tried to stake out the spot where they want to celebrate the Easter holiday. Overnight Easter camping is a longtime tradition in San Antonio and campers go all out to create memories. The city is asking everyone to be safe and to clean up after themselves. The park curfew goes back into effect Sunday at 11 p.m. To look at the full list of city parks participating in the Easter campout, head to ksat.com. Also happening today, several Catholic churches are holding special masses in observance of Holy Thursday. Many of the faithful acknowledging the Thursday before Good Friday is when Jesus had the last supper with his disciples before his arrest and then crucifixion. According to the Archdiocese of San Antonio's website, masses are scheduled for 6 or 7 o'clock tonight. Some services will be followed by feet washing and the adoration or prayer. The churches, services, and times are all listed on the diocese website, archsa.org. And then tomorrow, a huge crowd is expected downtown to watch the annual Passion of the Christ. The Passion Play begins at 10 o'clock Friday morning. There is a change this year. The procession begins at Travis Park. Parishioners from San Fernando Cathedral will reenact the Passion. The play portrays Jesus as he is condemned to death and carries the cross, including the stations of the cross. It will end with Jesus being crucified on the steps of San Fernando Cathedral. For those who aren't able to attend in person, KSAT will live stream the entire Passion Play on KSAT.com. Right now, you can also find the full schedule of events for the Passion Play and for Good Friday on our website. Crews in Baltimore still working to recover the bodies of four people who remain unaccounted for after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Two victims pulled out of the water yesterday 
and both identified. ABC's Christiane Cordero is in Baltimore with more on who these victims were and how officials are planning to remove the wreckage to reopen the port. For three days, crews have searched Baltimore's cold, murky water for the six construction workers who died in the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. In the past 24 hours, we've learned more about who they're looking for. And our hearts are with the families. And to all the families, we are so sorry for this tragedy. Maryland officials say 35-year-old Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes, originally from Mexico, and 26-year-old Dorlian Cabrera from Guatemala were pulled from a red pickup truck submerged in 25 feet of water Wednesday. ABC News has also confirmed Miguel Luna, originally from El Salvador, and Menor Suazo Sandoval, who emigrated from Honduras, are also among the dead. They all lived in the Baltimore area and were fixing potholes on the bridge when it collapsed. New video shows the lights on the ship go in and out twice, less than five minutes before it slammed into the key bridge. Maritime shipping expert Sal Mercogliano describes a ship going quiet as the worst possible sound. It, it, it's horrifying because you know you've lost control. There's nothing you can do. I mean, you're literally at the, at the mercy of inertia and currents and winds. Authorities say the swift moves of dispatchers and police may have prevented an even bigger catastrophe. The May Day call prompted them to stop drivers from traveling on the bridge. I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side, hold all traffic on the key bridge. The NTSB is reviewing preliminary data to better understand what caused the power outage. A full investigation could take over a year. Officials say the next priority is to reopen the busy port. But you don't want any more problems in the ship. You know, it's, it's kind of grounded right now up against the pier. So you don't want to pull it off and it winds up sinking on you. Today, the state of Maryland formally requested $60 million from the federal government to cover their initial and most immediate needs. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Baltimore. No rain today. Today, we transition to just sunshine and temperatures below average in the morning. Look at that morning chill, 45. That's 10 degrees below average for this time of year. That will be changing in the days ahead. And this afternoon, we made it up to 80 degrees. So a pretty big temperature spread as we often see this time of year. You go to Del Rio, 85 degrees. Kerrville right now at 79. Leon Springs, 77, along with nearby Bernie. Lavernia, 81 and 78 New Braunfels. Feeling good out there right now and this evening. Pretty uneventful other than a bit of a breeze. You'll notice the wind pick up a little bit this evening out of the southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour and some higher gusts, but temperatures will be comfortable. Mid 60s at 10 o'clock by midnight, we're at 60 degrees. That southeasterly wind, it's going to boost the humidity. Not only will you feel it, but I think you'll see it in a few different ways. We'll get into that along with when our next cold front arrives in just a bit. Thanks a lot, Adam. Taking a look at Transguide, we're at Interstate 35 at Alamo, and we've got some Thursday 5 o'clock gridlock going on. Uh, a lot of slowdown going both directions. Does not look like any lane closures, so to speak, but we do have uh, traffic slowing as you go in both directions, I-35 at Alamo. Straight ahead on KSAT 12 News at 5, the countywide competition that challenges local and area students to use their creativity to help nonprofits carry out their mission. The idea that one team has to help veterans. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what's ahead on the news at 6 o'clock today. The sentence was life in prison, but a grieving family feels there will never be justice in this case. The death of five-year-old Mercedes LaSoya, one of the worst cases of child abuse in Bear County history. Today at 6, the little girl's family tells their story of how they tried to save her life. Six months after San Antonio created a controversial reproductive justice fund, a lawsuit by anti-abortion groups has finally made its way into a courtroom. What's next for that city fund? Plus. This job specifically has cost nearly everything. A former vet tech is suing Atascosa County in the city of Pleasanton. He claims he was retaliated against for exposing policy violations. He says animals were euthanized when they shouldn't have been. What we know about that lawsuit today at 6. Thank you, Myra. Creating and collaborating, it's what BearFest is all about. High schools from all across the county partnering up with local nonprofits to showcase their mission. Our Daniela Ibarra introduces us to a team working to help veterans. 
And this project is a labor of love. Sheepdogs tend to hurt their own. With lots of lessons. I love the way he said that. These students from Judson Early College Academy are highlighting the nonprofit Sheepdog Impact Assistance. Amber Perales says its mission is to serve those who have fought on the front lines. What's it like working on a project like this? It's definitely exciting. You're going out there, you're um, making videos, taking pictures, meeting new people. Over the last four months, this team spent countless hours in this classroom working on their project, all while balancing a full high school course load and a college course load. You know, we all like, communicate and like make sure we all have that time aside to specifically do this. Their coach and teacher, Marcus Martinez, says the deadlines have pushed them to grow. To watch them go one-on-one -on -one when we're on the filming days is pretty awesome because they're just grown up and it's pretty awesome. Martinez's teams have been part of Bear Fest since its start eight years ago. Theirs is the competition's only all-girls team, which Perales believes gives them an edge. You know, sometimes boys are a little bit slackers, but... <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's just been it's been really fun just to be around a bunch of girls and you get to have shirts like yeah <laughs> Barbie shirts. We have the one male in our group, which is our teacher. Let's make him I don't know Ken or Alan or whatever. So it was just like <laughs> it, it just kind of fit with um, our group. From the graphics to the music, these Barbies created every element of this project. They hope the work they put in helps connect Sheepdog with someone in need. There is help out there, especially for ex-veterans and ex-first responders and people who have been on those front lines. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. The 8th Annual Bear Fest is April 1st. It's free to watch the showcase and award presentation. If you can't make it out to the Tobin Center, you can watch the live stream on KSAT.com or on KSAT+. Plus. Taking a look outside with live cam, roll down the windows, pop your windows open, open the doors, let in this beautiful air. Got my head out the sunroof is the song there that comes go. to mind on a day like today. I wouldn't do that. No, no don't Not do it. Not while driving. It's a song, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those hippity hoppity songs that the kids listen to these days. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, okay, if you want, open the windows. And just keep in mind, Oak is very high again today at over 7,000. We will turn warmer and humid over the next few days. Spring like this holiday weekend, and that humidity is likely to lead to some areas of patchy morning fog starting tomorrow and even affecting us on Easter. And then a Monday night cold front changes it all. Let's take a look at our dew point trend because this is what you're really going to feel in the days ahead. Tomorrow, Good Friday, still pleasant outside, dew points in the 50s, but you get into Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, it's going to feel very sticky. Some humidity that we haven't felt in quite some time around here. I mean, we're talking dew points up near 70 by Sunday and Monday. So here's the situation, here's why. The wind out of the southeast, of course, coming off the Gulf of Mexico, our source region for this low level humidity and notice the wind gusts even this evening and tonight by midnight gusting up to 20 miles per hour at times through tomorrow will also be a little breezy tomorrow afternoon wind gusts likely between 25 and 30 miles per hour so that southeasterly wind boosting that mugginess again i know some people like it some people enjoy the humidity especially people that suffer from dry crackly skin in the winter time around here well your humidity is coming back and you'll really feel it this upcoming weekend. You look at the dew points right now and it still has that crisp feel to our air, kind of a fall like feel. But as that changes overnight, fog is likely to settle in. And one of our computer models is picking up on that as well. Uh, typically these don't handle the models don't handle the fog very well, but this one seems to be picking up on it and it is showing the potential for visibility is under a mile at times for the morning drive tomorrow, just up through 9 a.m., then we clear out. Now let's talk about our next rain chance with the cold front I mentioned earlier that hits us Monday night. Very quiet up and down the midsection of the country. This beautiful counterclockwise counter swirl there, that nice comma-shaped cloud, that upper low in the Pacific, moving into Washington, Oregon, California, throwing moisture their way. That's going to be our next source of some upper energy and that cold front that's going to swing through. It's going to take its time, though. It doesn't make it here until Monday evening and Monday night. And unfortunately, that's our lone shot at any rain. We need the rain. The new drought monitor is in, and I'll share that with you coming up when we have a little bit more time at 6 p.m. 
As for tomorrow morning, mid 50s. So right at average for this time of year, 55 in San Antonio, as cool as 53 in Kerrville. By noon, we're at 73 and then right up near 80 again for the high temperature with a lot of sunshine once we get rid of the morning fog. But you'll notice that breeze out of the south steady at 10 to 20 at times gusting to 30 like we talked about earlier. Making it to 82 in Castroville and Pleasanton, Nixon 81, Comfort and Canyon Lake 79 tomorrow afternoon. We get into the weekend, mornings back in the 60s because of that higher humidity, morning fog every day, and that means on Easter Sunday, if you have the outdoor plans in the morning, a little misty and damp, but not real rain, and then mostly cloudy and then cooler by the middle of next week with behind the front. All right. Thank you so much, Adam. In Mary Major League Baseball is back. Opening day. Oh, yes. Opening day is finally here. The Rangers will open their season by unveiling a new banner. Meanwhile, the Astros game number one is already underway. We'll bring you the latest from Minute Maid Park, Houston's first outing under new leadership. Plus, Devin Vassell continues to be an anchor for the Spurs. His 31-point effort last night in Utah after the break. First-year manager Joe Espada says the Houston Astros are in a really good spot coming out of spring training and now on to opening day. Espada, of course, went from bench coach to manager this offseason, succeeding baseball legend Dusty Baker. The Astros are hosting Juan Soto and the New York Yankees for game number one to kickstart their 2024 Major League Baseball season. Let's take a live look at this game. First pitch was at 310. Left-hander Fromber Valdez started his third consecutive opening Day. The Yankees lead the Astros 5-4 in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Astros scored three runs in the first inning before Jake Myers homeward. The Yankees unloaded three runs in the fifth before taking the lead. All right, the Texas Rangers World Series title defense officially begins at 635 against the Chicago Cubs at Globe Life Field. Texas native Nathan Uvalde gets the opening day start for the Rangers and Justin Steele will counter for Chicago. Devin Vassell recorded his 18th 25-plus point game of the season last night after dropping 31 points and going 4 for 8 from 3 to lead San Antonio to victory, 118-111 to over the Jazz. Victor Wembanyama added 19 points and 5 blocks, while three other Spurs had 17 points apiece to help San Antonio stay the course after getting out to a 24-8 to lead in Utah. Vassell received praise from head coach Greg Popovich after the game for being, quote, a monster on both ends of the court and being a defensive anchor behind Wembenyama and Jeremy Sohan is an area of his game the 23 year old prides himself on. Just trying to be a leader out there um, on both ends of the floor you know uh, I talked about it earlier in the season where I just want to be kind of that defensive anchor you know we have Vic um, Jeremy's been playing great on the defensive end you know TJ's picking up full court Blake and um, you know I want to be that next guy I want to be somebody who's picking up and uh, just being disruptive so uh, defensive end I've just really been trying to anchor that and then offensively you know coach has been I, I say all the time coach puts me in a great position to get downhill get to my spots pick them apart you know if they're trapping me I can hit uh, the short roll or the skip or whoever it is and they've been knocking down shots Kai came in and knocked down some big shots um, so it was all all in a great night for a bunch of people it was a great team effort great team win up next is the Knicks. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is next.